I'm not a lawyer, but part two of day two from the Fonnie Willis hearing last week took a turn that I don't think anybody was expecting. I know, I know I'm late with this video, but I'm not a lawyer, so I had other stuff to do. My bad. Let me tell y'all what happened. And it's a lot, so try to keep up. So this is Nathan Wade's law partner. His name is Terrence Bradley, and he was called up to testify by the defense. But what you need to know about Terrence Bradley is that not only did he and Nathan and a third attorney have a law firm together, Terrence also represented Nathan in his divorce proceedings. So Terrence was Nathan's divorce lawyer in the beginning, at least. The other thing to know is that Terrence was actually the defense's first witness on day one. He was called to the stand by Ashley Merchant, but he kept invoking attorney-client privilege, basically saying that any information that he had regarding Nathan and Fonnie's relationship, he learned when he was Nathan's divorce attorney. So that information is therefore protected because of attorney-client privilege. So he was on the stand on day one for not very long because there was some instruction for them to all get better understanding of attorney-client privilege. But on day two, after lunch, Terrence is called back. And very quickly into his testimony, it becomes clear that number one, he does not want to be there. And number two, he and Ashley Merchant, the attorney who filed the motion to get Fonnie and Nathan disqualified from the case, know each other. And Terrence and his attorney are still invoking attorney-client privilege. Good afternoon, Mr. Bradley. Good afternoon. Um, before I begin, um, I wanted to ask you if you have you wanted to clarify an end of your statements that you made yesterday. Go ahead and begin. I wanted to ask if you wanted to clarify any of your statements that you made yesterday. Go ahead and ask whatever you're going to ask, Ms. Merchant. You initially became involved in this matter because you called me. Right? Absolutely not. I didn't call you. No, it was through a third party. Um, so on January 5th, 2024, we had a text exchange where we talked about um, that I had discovered that Nathan took Fonnie on a cruise and a trip and paid for it with the business card. You told me you were on a plane home from Dubai, but you would call me as soon as you got home. Do you remember that? So what I have is a text message from you saying, oh my God, Nathan took Fonnie on a trip to Napa mm -hmm. and paid for it with his firm. Continue reading. And you said, is he that dumb? Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, I'm on a plane from Dubai, land at three. We'll call you as soon as I land. And then you told me that you weren't surprised because they took many trips to Florida, Texas, and California. I don't have that. Um, I sent you um, a statement and said, upon information and belief, Willis and Wade met while both were serving as a magistrate judge in, and began a romantic relationship at that time. And you corrected me and say, no, it was in municipal court. Is that correct? I think that's pretty accurate. And is that based on your personal knowledge? But what question was it municipal court or when they first met or okay so, so uh, i answer mr. Bradley, just a second. No, mr chopra has risen all right um your honor uh, i do have one purpose here and that purpose has now been met um any information that mr bradley may possess would in fact have come from his representation of mr wade this falls within the purview of his divorce proceedings which as we've testified earlier commenced in december of 2018. There is no Pierce or Shield associated with it, and so we would say that under Rule 1.6, we should not be compelled to give any further information. So Ashley continues pressing Terrence about information, and eventually the other attorneys get up to also ask questions of Terrence about the relationship. And Terrence continues to invoke attorney-client privilege. And just to make this point very clear, the attorney-client privilege that's being invoked is Nathan claiming that any information that he has about Fonnie and Nathan was learned while he was not only representing Nathan in his divorce proceedings, but was specifically learned while he was giving Nathan legal advisement regarding that divorce. Now, the defense, on the other hand, is pressing the issue because according to them, if there's any information that Terrence learned about Fonnie and Nathan while they were, say, hanging out or having dinner or just having conversation as friends, that information would therefore not be covered under attorney-client privilege. So this becomes a major sticking point during the testimony. Your knowledge that their affair began, that their romantic relationship, I'm sorry, began um, while they were both serving as municipal court judges. Is that from your personal information, your personal knowledge, or is that from? I have no personal knowledge of when it actually happened. I was not there. I do not have any personal knowledge. So, And so whether what you learned, if anything, was during communications with a client. It was. Okay. Um, isn't that true that I gave you a copy of the 
motion to disqualify in this case. I emailed it to you and you read it, reviewed it, and emailed me back to everything and it was accurate. You emailed me and I... You, okay. All right. So there are things contained within that, Ms. Merchant, in which he has now said uh, fell within the privilege and that he did not have the ability to waive. Okay. So I think that's where we have to leave it there. The question is, did Mr. Wade ever tell you that he visited Ms. Willis at her house? I don't think I can answer that. Up until the defense brings up circumstances regarding Terrence leaving the law firm that, that he shared with Nathan. But in Terrence's response, he says that the reason he left is covered under attorney-client privilege. And what was the reason for the partnership or the fee-sharing arrangements? What, what caused the separation? I wanted to leave and go out on my own. And that's the only reason? I wanted to leave and go out on my own, yes. I understand, but that's, that was the only reason. There wasn't any suggestions or allegations of any form of misconduct on either part, either on your part or Mr. Wade's part, correct? Misconduct of what? I don't want to try not to get into the specifics. Was there any allegations made of suspected misconduct on your part or on Mr. Wade's part? Did he accuse you of doing anything? We had a disagreement, yes. Had that disagreement have anything to do with Ms. Willis? Oh, no. Okay. Did it have anything to do with your conduct? No. Did it have but, anything to do with his conduct? Hold on, wait. So we had a disagreement. We disagreed. And so we dissolved. The, well, I left the firm. I'm telling you, we had a disagreement and we. Just tell me what the disagreement was. then. The disagreement is mine to know. I mean, I don't see the relevance of the disagreement that I had. It's not privileged, correct? No, that is privileged. Oh, it is privileged. It why is. Why is that privileged? Because it's privileged. So the defense wraps up their direct examination of Terrence. And then the state attorneys get up to do cross-examination on Terrence. And it gets interesting fast. Uh, you are no longer business partners. That is correct. You are no longer friends. I mean, if he's saying that we're not friends, then I yeah. I want to know what you think, Mr. Bradley. Do you consider yourself a friend of Mr. Wade? I would. Do you recall answering questions as though you left due to a disagreement? Yes. And that disagreement was that there was... Yes. Yes, there was an allegation that you sexually assaulted a member of the firm, correct? Yes, there was an allegation, yes. And as a result of that allegation, you left? I did. Mr. Bradley, you, in fact, paid that employee $20,000, correct? That is in... Uh, Did you pay the person who had made the allegation of sexual assault any amount of money? There was money left in an escrow that belonged to me. I don't know what that amount was. And did that money that was left in the escrow that belonged to you, was that paid to the employee who said that you... I never... I never and any... I never gave any money. I never... I left the money in the escrow account. What happened to that money? I, I don't know what happened to it. If there's no connection to the money you left in the escrow account and the allegations of sexual assault that an employee of your firm made against you, why was it that you brought to my attention? Why did you respond the way you did about money in an escrow account when my question was, did you pay this employee any money? I didn't hand any money your knowledge, where did the money in the escrow account go? To the employee. To that employee. <sighs> Mr. Bradley previously testified that the reason he left the firm was totally and completely covered by privilege. When asked by the state, he went into a factual scenario that, to my mind, I don't see how it relates to privilege at all. And so now I'm left wondering if Mr. Bradley has been properly interpreting privilege this entire time. So the judge says that it seems Terrence may actually be confused by what is covered under attorney-client privilege. And so he rules that he's going to conduct an on-camera interview with Terrence in his chambers that the public won't see. And in that interview, he will dig into what exactly Terrence knows about Fani and Nathan's relationship and when exactly he learned that information. Now, if the judge decides that the information is actually not covered under attorney-client privilege, he will call everybody back to the courtroom and there will be some form of a day three. So Terrence is excused from the stand. We now wait to see what the judge rules from the in-camera interview in the chambers. And that will determine if there's more to see or not. And if there's not, then the next thing we'll hear is a ruling from the judge regarding if Fani and Nathan will be disqualified from this case.